DNA molecules inside a confined environment, just like your headphones inside your backpack, will tend to tie knots. There is a theorem due to uh, the Witt Sumners and Yanan Diao that says that the knot in probability goes to one as the length of the chain goes to infinity in R3. So if you have a very long cable, it doesn't need to be a complicated knot, but eventually it will knot itself. So you have such long molecules inside such small environments, it is to be expected that these molecules will have some topological complexity. Now, we do not know if there is spontaneous knotting, we can anticipate there is. And we do not know if there is spontaneous knotting, is it important for the cell? We don't know that. We know that the cell typically does not like topological entanglement. So the cell has an army of enzymes that the moment they see a knot, they'll come here and they say, oh, look, there's a knot here. Okay, we need to break it. They open, they break, they transport one strand through the break and they reseal the break. And when they do that, they unknot the knot. So these are little Pac-Mans that go around the cell. They're called type 2 topoisomerases and they will just break the chain, transport another strand, reseal the chain and remove the topological complexity. Type 2 topoisomerases are enzymes that are ubiquitous. They have been found in every possible organism, I mean from archaea to humans and they are essential to life. Meaning, if the type 2 topoisomerase in the cell doesn't work, the cell dies. So they are wonderful targets for antibiotic drugs, for example. So there is a, a big family of uh, drugs called fluoroquinolones. You may have heard of ciprofloxacin, used for, to treat bacterial, um, like urinary tract infections or sometimes ear infections. What that drug will do is it will target the type 2 topoisomerase in the bacterium that is making you sick, in all those bacteria. Uh, when the type 2 topoisomerase stops working, these bacteria will have an accumulation of interlinked DNA, not knotted, but interlinked DNA, and that accumulation of topology will kill the bacteria. So let's assume this is a DNA molecule that is not helical yet. Okay, so now let's make it into a helix. It has to be a right-handed helix, and I need to twist this an even number of times, because otherwise, when I close it, I would get a Möbius band, and that's not what I want. So now I'm going to close this chain right here. So this is, I mean, this isn't a human, tape. this is not human DNA then? Or? No, let's assume this is either one of those loops or it's a circular DNA molecule that could be a bacterial genome or it could be a, just a naturally occurring plasmid. And this coil is just a natural coil from the double helix. And here I just put two of those turns to make it simpler. But there's many more turns. Now what are you doing? And now these scissors are the enzymes that are going to start DNA replication. So the circle, if we assume that this is a bacterial uh, DNA, there will be an origin of replication. Replication will go bi-directionally. There will be first enzymes called helicases that will unwind the DNA. So they will break the hydrogen bonds and open up the two strands. So unwind DNA and we can mimic that by just cutting. And you can imagine another pair of scissors going in the other direction. Okay, replication is done. Now we went from one circle, one circular DNA molecule, to two circular DNA molecules. Well, look what the problem is. We have a topological problem right here. What's going on there? They're not there together, they're linked. They're interlinked. So they are two independent circles. Each one of them has exactly the same genetic code, but these two circles are interlinked. So now, if each new cell wants to inherit one circle, they will pull. If they pull, they will break. If DNA breaks, that's a very bad, that's very bad news for your cell. Or very gently, an enzyme called type 2 topoisomerase, the old friend, will come here will break very gently, will transport one chain through the break and reseal the break, and then assess, am I done? Oh, I'm not done. Okay, then I need to 
break again. Okay, I'm going to break again, transport, reseal. Okay, now I'm done. Now I'm done. Now each one of these new chromosomes can segregate to a new daughter cell and cell division can happen. So this is a problem. When type 2 topoisomerases don't work, then the newly replicated chromosomes are interlinked and there's nothing you can do about them. And that interlinking will eventually kill the bacterial cells. And this happens every time the DNA is replicating. Every time you go through replication, the DNA is interlinked. Why? Because DNA is a helix. That's the reason. It's a very simple mathematical reason. DNA is a helix. So when you cut it through the center, if it's circular and you cut it through the center, these crossings will become link, interlinks between two chains. Chromosomes that look like noodles, but they occupy distinct territories within the cell nucleus. And then you look in here, well the question is, is there organization here? 